Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how I painted this black and white painting. A lady in a big black hat and very cool black dress. So we're going to begin on an 11 by 14 or 12 by 16 canvas. Either one will work. Of course you could also paint this on a smaller or larger canvas. I've got a large blending uh, filbert brush I'm using. This is a number 50. Um, titanium white and black. You can use any white or black that you want and a little bit of water. So all I'm going to do is just brush up and down uh, on both sides. I'll create a simple little archway somewhere in the center and really just being carefree with this, not worrying too much about measuring anything. This is going to be loose, impressionistic and abstract for background so anybody watching this right now no matter what skill level you're at you can do this um, we're going to spend a little bit more time uh, on details on the lady and the figure of course um, but you can make it as simple as you want and leave out the features on the face and I'll go over that a little bit later as the painting progresses I'm going to add these two diagonal lines going uh, narrowing towards the archway down there in the center so it's almost like a triangle you could think of it like that that'll make it easier for you so what that does is just help to create that perspective and um, it makes it look like it's farther away and the wider the lines are here in the foreground uh, it'll help make us feel like we're in the foreground and we're kind of standing there so it's really interesting just with creating some lines and angles like that that you can instantly get perspective so I'll be coming in with um, a flat brush pretty soon. You can also use an angle brush. I'll be adding more white and black for shadows, lines, uh, just to create a little bit more atmosphere and architecture. Some molding and just blocking in light and dark for our shadows and highlights.
So as we kind of move along with this painting and add more and more of the lines, I want you guys to concentrate on um, looking at the direction these lines are going in. So uh, they're going in the same direction as the first original lines down on the in the foreground on the road, and, and they're going in, narrowing in towards the center. This is going to help draw our eyes in and create that perspective. So I'm following along with the same diagonal lines on the buildings. They're going to get go kind of on a, an angle and be slightly diagonal. So make sure that you're doing that. Otherwise, you're going to get a totally different perspective. Um, but because it's abstract, it'll still look cool no matter how your lines are. And in some areas here, you can notice that I'm pulling and flicking a little bit underneath some of the lines. This is going to create that depth and 3D effect for the molding and maybe railings that stick out and just part of the buildings. So I'm just going to keep adding lines, keeping this really simple. I'm not using um, a ruler. I'm not measuring anything. I'm just doing this freehand. That's just the way I enjoy painting, but um, definitely use a ruler if you want, sketch yours out ahead of time if you like. There's no right or wrong way to approach art, guys, in my mind. Um, in just a moment, I'm going to be switching over to a mop brush. So here I'm using a Princeton one inch oval mop brush. I'm going to tap into black. I didn't get it wet ahead of time. You don't want to get these brushes wet. Once you put them in the water, they lose their shape. So just tapping here and there, adding some foliage, little bits of moss or vines hanging down. I want this to have a really uh, fun feeling to it and it's got a cold kind of uh, feeling to it without the foliage so I think this really um, adds a lot to the painting and softens up all those harsh lines so it's a nice balance I guess you could say. I'll be adding a highlight to the tops of these and the sides of them uh, with a little bit of white and then we're going to also be adding a few little pots and planters underneath them. So we'll be adding white for the highlights and of course black for the darkest shadows and the contrast. So I think this painting actually looks cool even just like this. If you didn't want to add a figure, you could have a finished painting just as it is like here. But I really want to add a lot more white here to the road and the bottom part of this painting. I want to really brighten this up before I add my figure just so that I've got a really nice striking contrast. The more um, I brighten this up here, I don't want it to be just straight white though. I still want to have those uh, light gray tones and mid tones in there. But I'm just softening up the archway a little bit here, guys, with a dry brush of uh, my gray. And then I'm going to clean this area up by adding a little bit more uh, white. So I've got a variation there, and you get that soft, shadowy glow. Um, so it's not just black and white, okay? That's nice to have those uh, mid-tones in there and different shades of gray. Um, but I was going to say, the, the brighter I have the, the front here where I'm going to add the figure over top, the more contrast I'm going to have and the more her dress will stand out. So it, for me, it's all about the dress and, and her hat in this painting. I just love it. So I want that to stand out. Now I'm adding um, a lot more white there above the archway. I want that to be bright and stand out. And then I'm going to just scumble and dry brush a little bit. Just dragging my brush here uh, on its side with a little bit of white to give this almost like a stucco texture kind of a feel to it.
Okay, I'm going to start adding some pots here, adding some texture by making them look round. So using my filbert brush, you could use a flat brush too, or even a round brush. Uh, it's the way you use a brush, so I'm kind of just pulling and, and flicking on a side uh, angle there across for, um, and almost creating like a little bit of a scoop on those pots. That way you get that round look, and it'll look like a 3D object. I'm going to accent the windows by adding little bits of white, lines going different ways. All of this is so easy and effective. It's going to give you all those extra little details and it'll make it look like you took hours and hours on your painting. Um, less is more when it comes to um, your brush strokes. So although we're, we're adding a lot of lines, I'm not spending too much time on each or any one of them. So just kind of do a one, one brush stroke thing and then move on to the next area. And that's going to keep your painting look really loose and like a natural uh, abstract. It's just going to have a lot of feeling to it. So I'm going to add another layer of uh, soft white here. Um, I think I mentioned at the beginning of the video that it doesn't matter what white or black you use. Um, I like titanium white because it's a nice cool white and I'm going to get some cooler gray tones. So if you use um, more of like an ivory white, a more of a warm white, and uh, many of you may not even know that there there's a difference in um, whites, but there is there that's the temperature, so it'll be either cool or warm. Um, so if you just use black with water, a little bit of water to make softer tones of gray, uh, it'll look more like taupe, have more of a warm, kind of sandy, feathered gray look to it. But when you mix the black with titanium white, you're going to get more of that cool uh, gray color. So I hope that makes sense and I can see here that I've got a mixture of both because there's some areas where I just used a just diluted my black a little bit to make it lighter and it does have that kind of um, warm gray color to it and I like that mixture here we've got a, a, um, a difference we've got a combination of temperatures going on so that's nice and it works really well and it's easy on the eyes. So I'm just going to keep adding a little bit of white here, making all the features and accents stand out a little bit more. And it's always easier to approach a painting, especially when there's lots going on in it, just in black and white, because you don't have to spend too much time worrying about color mixing. All you have to do is just think about where you're adding the lines and what lines you're adding. Um, and the rest just kind of comes naturally. The black and the white make all those mid-tones. So then after your painting is dry, you can then go over with any color that you want. So it's kind of like you're making a grown-up coloring book, right? Um, yeah, so if you're... And there's lots of painters out there that approach their paintings first in grayscale. They do that first, and then they go over with the color after. I'm going to take a really small filbert brush now. This is a one or even a zero and a little bit of black and I'm going to add some more little details here. At the bottom I'm going to start her dress and it's going to be like a triangle shape. So oftentimes when I'm approaching things that maybe I'm not so comfortable with and they um, intimidate me a little bit I just break things down into shapes and that makes it really simplified. Um, so in here it's just um, a kind of a lopsided triangle and then sort of like an oval here going up into her waist and then it's going to kind of just cross over so you'll have that cross and then it goes right down into the dress so I'll be painting all of that in black and we'll be adding a few little uh, highlights on the bottom of the dress to create those neat folds and have her dress look sort of ruffled at the bottom.
Okay, so we've added a few of those highlights in there. I'm gonna come up and start defining her arms, shoulders, and elbows a little bit now. Again, breaking it down into shapes. Her back, uh, the, the dress line, the back line there goes down into a V. And then here, her elbow, her arm on the right side looks like another triangle. So I'm gonna leave that because we're not gonna see any more of her arm there. It's just a little triangle. And then on her arm here on the other side, I'm gonna add a little bit of white to my black and I'm gonna make her arm stand out a little bit more. I'll add a little bit more of a highlight here and there to make her, her waist look like it's uh, a little bit more 3D and just pull right there where her elbow's gonna come out and then add a little bit more black just to outline that to keep it separate from her waist. And then I'm going to add a little bit of light and shadow for her shoulder blades and the spine of her back. But I want you guys to um, be really careful about when you're adding the shadows and highlights on, on the back. Um, and this goes for um, if we were working on collarbone, like the front of her and her chest area too. If you use too much contrast and not enough mid-tones, the the structure or not structure <laughs> the body will end up looking really really skinny and skeletal and you don't want that so you have to make sure you have soft mid-tones and gradation from dark to light for um, your shoulder blades and I'll just demonstrate here first I'm going to go up into her neck and the side of her face and just kind of make it gradually ease down there on a slight slope down to her shoulder Now we've got a nice base color for her back, but it's the buildings in the background, so I'm gonna have to go over that. I'm gonna just bring up her hat, line it up from her shoulder and down, just, just slightly past her other shoulder. And then I'm gonna paint it in mostly black, but I'm gonna tint it with a little bit of white to make it a really dark charcoal color so that it's separate from her black hair. But if you, you can choose the color of hair you want. If you want yours to have lighter hair, then that's fine. Just add a little bit of white to your black and then make your hat solid black. So you would just do the reverse, right? So I'm going to start off with making a medium gray tone here and I'm going to just go over her shoulders and her back, leaving it just a little bit lighter right where it meets the dress. And then I'm going to start adding a little bit of white and I'll start really gradually working on making her shoulder blades and her her uh, back line and her spine stand out a little bit more. Remember I talked about making it really, really subtle so you don't want um, full on black or white, otherwise it's gonna look very skeletal and too skinny. So to make her spine a little bit darker, I'm gonna cut around with a little bit of light gray.
Okay, so I'm going to add more and more white because the hat is wet. So I'm, I've got a little bit of black paint there that I'm using to mix with my white a little bit. And I'm going to start the shape of her, the side of her face. And she'll have her hair coming down just a little bit and then going behind her ear. You want to make sure you get the jawline in there. So just push a little black in there, making it narrower. And then I'm going to add some more white to just brighten the jawline and her shoulders. Now you can make the face kind of blurry. You don't have to do any features at all. It's going to look really modern and um, cool, abstract like no matter what so if you if you want to leave it's optional if you want to leave the features out that's fine obviously i'm not going to leave the shape of her face like that it's not uh it's not right yet it's a little bit too big on the bottom we can't see where um her nose or her her mouth cuts in so i want to do a little bit more to the side of the face but i don't want you guys to feel like um you have to do the features it can be a little bit tricky um, adding the features in and I will be switching over to a liner brush um, but I, you guys can definitely do it trust me I'm not a portrait artist and if I can do it and make it look half decent <laughs> um, then you guys definitely can and um, I hope that you guys share your versions on our Facebook group because I'm really excited about sharing this one with you guys and seeing what your paintings look like um, feel free to add color to her dress if you want I think I'm going to go back and add a red glaze over her dress. I want it to look like deep, dark red velvet. I think that would look beautiful with its soft gray tones in the background and um, the black hat. So uh, you could do that with green. You could use a uh, viridian or phthalo green and make her dress that green velvety look uh, or blue or purple. Um, no matter what color you choose, it's going to look just awesome. So I really look forward to seeing um, the different colors you guys choose, or just black and white if that's how you want to leave it as well. Um, I'm adding a little bit of a shadow at the base of the dress, and also some more black and white, and just doing little lines in different directions. That's really all you have to do. Uh, lines in different directions with black and white, and you'll instantly get, or naturally get, those gray tones, and it's going to look like all those folds and where the dress kind of bunches up at the bottom. Now, because I want to make her hair uh, look darker and separate from the hat, I'm just going to come around and add more black to her hair and then a little bit of white um, and make a darker charcoal gray color here for her hat. So I'm going to go inside the hat and then go right around her hair and see what a difference that makes. It makes her head stand out separate from the hat. But I'm not going to make the entire hat that charcoal color. I'm going to leave it really, really dark on the left side.
So for the rest of the video is totally optional. At this stage, you could definitely leave it as is. I'm going to add more details, just kind of fine tune everything, more shadows, clean up the edges of her dress, um, add more depth to the pots, some more black, maybe a little bit more white, and overall kind of just cut around her dress and make the background a little bit brighter to make her dress stand out even more. And then I'm going to go ahead and work on the features of her face a little bit. I'm going to be using a little liner brush and just doing tiny little dabs and dots and tiniest little lines so less is more when it comes to the face i always have a hard time with painting portraits especially profiles um, so it can be a little bit intimidating but trust me less is more when you do this um, try to add smaller and lighter um, dots and lines and dabs than you think you need to so it's always less than you think you have to add especially when we're working on something so small so her face is really small and it's just a profile so we're only seeing half of her face um, and you can always always go over it acrylic paint is really forgiving so you can you can uh, take the paint off if it's wet or you can paint over it and start again uh, as many times as you have to
Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed watching this one. You learned a lot, got inspired, and want to paint along with me. Share your versions on the Facebook group. Feel free to subscribe to my channel, share these videos, and join Patreon for more content, early access, monthly giveaways, and to really help um, fund my videos and my channel. Thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you soon in my next one. Bye!